So I hope everybody can see my screen. What we've moved into here is I've actually launched this into the SAP Business Objects Planning and Consolidation Tool. Our front end start here is we've kind of logged in through a web portal here, which is one of the features of BPC to allow us to come in and access our information in one single stop. So this is an example of something you might give to higher level management that they may be doing the day-to-day -day tasking, but they may be wanting to come in and see some high-level information. And they can, we can set up any customizable dashboard here. But some of the key features of BPC I want to point out here, as we'll see throughout the product interaction, is over here to the right is something called an action pane. And an action pane is guiding us through our experience with the system. The top part here is what we call our current view. And I like to call it the who, what, when, where's, and why's of an organization. For example, we can take and see our chart of accounts built out, broken out by account, as well as any statistical data, including like these KPI calculations over here. We can see our different entity roll-ups. So for example, if you've got different leases you're rolling up into different organizations, and you might have one roll-up that rolls it up, obviously, into the individual REITs, if you have multiple REITs, but you also might want to roll it up by operator, for example. It can also be done through uh, roll-ups in our entity dimension. And we also break down things as useful for time, you know, months, quarters, and years for analysis, as well as any of the other pertinent features of your organization, whether you wanted to be able to slice things by geography or property type, investment type, that kind of information can all be broken out into what we call dimensions to be able to look at your, your information differently, gain knowledge from it, and then build out those reports and those statistical areas that are necessary for REITs. The second area here in the white is really guiding us through what we can do with this system. There's full security built into BPC, surrounded about what a user can access within the system, as well as what they can do. So you can really control within your organization if you have different people who can only access certain financial information for certain organizations, whether you wanted to say certain people have certain leases they're available to see, or they can only see this REIT but not that REIT can all be set up through security, as well as then what they can do within the system. Can they run reports? Are they available to make inputs? Do they make journal entries, et cetera? So all that is taken care of here and available to us in our task part action pane. And then finally here is we always have available to us the ability to move within the different interfaces within the organization or within BPC. So we talked about it being fully integrated with the Office Suite, which means we can go to Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. We have the capabilities of using the web, as we've seen here, for some reporting needs as well as there is a full administration console here that a finance person can go into and maintain and manage the system from an administrator point of view very easily using Microsoft-friendly interfaces like an Internet Explorer view and Microsoft Excel to maintain the system information and the data behind it without having to work closely with IT to get things done. So I'm going to move now into our BPC for Excel. And as we can see here, it's the basic Excel that we're all used to. And then we actually have our action pane with us here. So we can show how BPC is it actually a fully integrated part of Excel. It's not just a little piece one adds on. It's fully integrated in the system. And then once again, we have our information here for our different dimensions. So I wanted to open up one of these dimensions and kind of show you how things work. Within here, I have a tree structure view of my entities, for example. In this demo, we're looking at an automobile company that has different entities around the world, and they have grouped their organization by a management view of things and a legal view of things, where you have the same base level information, for example, Canada here, and he rolls up into different hierarchies. As I said, this can be extensively used within the reorganization for organizing um, your base level, whether it's leases or properties, and then organizing them by operator or by the distinct different REIT roll-ups and then the ownership associated with that. So if you've got complex ownerships in there, percentage ownerships over time, they can be set up through these hierarchies as well. One of the things I wanted to go into is some basic reporting capabilities of VPC. So if we can see as one of my tasks available on the right, I can go into reporting and analysis. And I'm actually going to go run one of these reports uh, using a dynamic template. These dynamic templates are shipped with the VPC product. So as soon as we get some dimensions built into your system pertinent to your business, we start loading some data through, we can get to reporting right away. We don't have to go back and write any custom reports. We don't have to try and fit your business into some hard-coded reports. These are actually flexible, wizard-driven reports available for use. 
as soon as you, you have some information in the system. So once again, we, we have our dimensions we've broken out to how our business is laid out within the organization. We've loaded some data through. We might have loaded data from our transaction system. We might have brought some data in from uh, a leasing system, for example, to provide information in, and make it available in our reporting infrastructure here. So as we can see, we've built a report. It's a variance report here. So we have our actuals and we have our budget, for example. And we can see our variance is calculated over here to the right. This report, though, is just in Excel. You know, and that's an area that everybody is familiar with already, especially in the reporting world. So many people today use Excel extensively. It's not the only way to gather and report data through. But potentially, I can go in and just do an insert of a graph, for example. Right? This is a very basic Excel function that I can integrate now with my BPC experience, as well as I can do in, in things like inserting columns that is just a basic Excel function available to me. So I can actually just put a basic calculation in here, change my format, drag down my formula, and it's going to now follow me through my experience with the system. So for example here, we have run a variance report here. We want to see, dig into what these variances mean, because it's one thing to run a report, but really we're trying to learn from our data. So if I look at here, I see that my European part of my business has my largest variance here at 11.2%. So I'm going to actually drill down on this information to where within Europe do I have this problem by double clicking on Europe. We can see now that it's climbed down that hierarchy I showed you before in the current view to show us the, the different regions that are rolling up into Europe. And we can see here once again that Great Britain has our largest variance. So I'm going to drill down into here again. So I've gotten to the bottom of my hierarchy here. So I know where the problem is. The problem is in Great Britain, but I want to know some more information about the problem. So I'm going to actually pivot this report or turn it so I can look at it by the account. And if we see here now, we knew before that Great Britain caused the problems, and we knew the problems were in our direct profit, but we didn't know what part of our direct profit. And so I can see now by account that our costs are in line actually doing very well against our budget, but our revenues are having problems. So once again, I can drill into that section of there as, well, as if you were climbing through your hierarchy structure in your chart of accounts you can actually see now that our third-party revenue is where we have our, our issue. So once again, drilling to the bottom of that, I know that third-party revenue in Great Britain is where I have an issue. But I'm wondering now, in my case, which products are causing that issue. So I can actually pivot over to the products now. And if you've noticed, you can actually see as we've gone through that this graph is updating with us as we move through from dimension to dimension, and the data is updating as we go. That our sedans have our greatest problem again here. So once again, drilling into the sedans, We can actually see now that I've gotten to the base level. I know where there's a problem. Our X100 line is having a great variance at 27.6% here. And if I look at this number, I'm going to wonder, you know, my budget was at 1,000 here, but my actuals are only coming in at 729. And I, now that I've seen this, I might have to say, well, I have to go back and look at some other data in another system. Maybe I have to go look at some invoices. Maybe I have to go check back with an operator and see what the problem is here. What I have, though, is a capability here. Instead of exiting out of BPC and going to another system, I can actually use a process called drill through to drill through into some data. So what we have is we have some transaction level data available to us. Even though our reporting system is at a higher level of detail, we actually have the ability to drill down into some more detailed transaction level information.